Boo. Oh, hello. Come see what we've got going on here. Sorry for the noise, but uh, we're in air cutting production. We're not making chips, but if you look at the tip of that nozzle and pretend that it's the work, the tool, we're cutting out our our scoop supports right now. They're the large oval pieces that go in between each of the scoops. And I wanted to show this because we're doing a lot of work to get these old 15 year old CNC machines up to snuff so that we can do our, I'll close this because it's a little bit noisy, so that we can do all of the work that we need to do between the CAD and the CAM and then sending the commands over to <clears throat> the machines working the g-code on these old machines was a challenge and we've done we've made phenomenal progress at getting these machines working how we want them to even doing complicated things like um, rigid tapping on these machines i'll show you that in a moment right now it's uh going through the second operation which is a drill cycle it's just going down through and tapping or drilling two holes the next operation it's about to do is rigid tapping where it's going to put two one half 13 tap holes into the workpiece there it would be putting the tap in right now coming down and it would be tapping those holes you tap going in one direction and then you reverse the spindle just reverse there and if you want to zoom in on that, you'll see the spindle reversing right there. So it's tapping going down and then reversing, pulling the tap out. I know that doesn't seem like a lot to people who watch CNC videos all the time, but getting that achievement on these old machines with very little documentation was a monumental achievement for us. So I'm excited about that. We all wanted to share that with you. Josh, if he was here, would be jumping up and down behind me. It's Saturday. We were so busy yesterday, Friday, that we totally forgot to do the weekly whirl. So, sorry. But uh, my wife reminded me today. She's like, honey, where's the weekly whirl? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, my bad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've been busy, super busy. And I'm going to show you a few things. If Josh were here, he would be doing it with us, too. But, unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. So, T-shirts. I'm not wearing a Harmony Turbines t-shirt, but they're on order. I like that We one. got our first order of, uh, well, I don't know, 40 t-shirts or so that are ordered. We're waiting for them to come in so that family, friends, and the core group of us can kind of check it out, our interns, and make sure the sizes seem right, make sure we're happy with the coloring and the logos and everything. Once we are happy with that, we'll go ahead and start opening it up to the rest of you, the investors, so that you can tell us what sizes you need. They're going to be pretty much a, a neutral gray with the Harmony Turbines logo here and we now have the power to change the world lettering on the front. Nothing on the back. The hats are simply going to be our Harmony Turbines logo. They're going to also be kind of a neutral gray color. So wait for another week or two and we'll have more information on t-shirts and how you can get yours. The uh, next thing that I wanted to chat about is hit emergency stop on that our tool holder carts we were working on putting these together last week Josh had some fun with these crazy um, tool carts putting them together but they have the ability to hold 35 tools in each of them and even our spindle cleaners we got our new come this way walk this way <laughs> got our new shipments finally of our collet holders and collets so we have another 32 tools that arrived tools and, or well tool holders collets and collet holders so we have all of our cat 40 tooling um, apparatus here and the holders we've got a whole bunch of um, old milling bits and everything that we can test with so we're going to be doing a lot of testing on the CNC machines next week, and we're probably going to be making some chips, not just air cutting. So we're getting ready to start making the parts that we need for our one kilowatt turbine. And I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute, you already had the gearing and stuff. But as we said in previous episodes, that gearing didn't work well because the tolerances weren't tight enough. So the gearing, it ended up 
binding when you would run the gears together and we can't have any binding. So doing them on the CNC machines should eliminate that. Um, just a quick 30 second thing here. If you wanna zoom in on this, honey, I don't know why our R8 collets are sticking out a little bit. We even have my friend who uses R8 collets all the time in his bridge ports. He brought his over, we tested them, and his did the exact same thing. So the problem is something with either the spindles or maybe this is Excello, how they work, but even when it's tightened up, we still have a little, you know, 3 16th or a quarter inch stick out of our R8 collets. If anyone is familiar with Excello machines and says, oh yeah, that's a common thing, don't worry about it. I would feel better. I couldn't find any information online. So if you're familiar with these type of machines, our Excellos both have some odd stick out when the, um, when the R8 collets are in place. So we are uh, also doing a lot of work. Our steel or our metal storage rack is complete. Metal storage rack number one. Even before Uncle Roger left, he and Josh were working on getting this welded up. You'll notice this is the same one that I have at my home as well, my home shop, when we were doing work under creating more. Uh, I did have some stuff in my videos back then, but we've got vertical, or I'm sorry, storage from the front and all these pockets here. And then we can hold big two foot long pieces in this, 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 and this bay, we can hold one foot pieces and these two bays going all the way across the front. So we have tons and tons of storage for you know, all of our cutoffs and pieces and parts as we're making things. And then additionally, eight foot long pieces in the bays, in all of these bays in the back and even on top. So we've got steel rack or metal storage rack number one. Metal storage rack number two is going to be here where we have our big 24 foot pieces and then all of those pieces will just pull out from the front so there won't be any storage in the in the front side of that rack. That'll be our long rack. Uh, plasma cutter. We did talk about that last week, but now it was hooked up and working this week. So our plasma cutter is functioning and it functions really, really well. I'm very happy with this. It is a Lotus, uh, LPT DC 2000 if anyone's interested. It's a really really nice unit. We haven't used it for anything but plasma cutting but it is supposed to be able to do stick and TIG as well. We're just going to use it for plasma cutting so that we can do fabrication of parts and it's a very very nice unit. We've in fact cut a bunch of pieces to finish off that metal storage rack with the plasma cutter so we're very happy with that. Sorry I feel like I'm racing here folks but Lots and lots of exciting things happening. And again, I apologize that Josh wasn't here to be with us for this Weekly Whirl. Interns, they're gonna be coming back. In fact, they just emailed me, so we've got our three interns who are now graduated. Two of them just graduated, or will be graduating in another two weeks. The one is already in college. They're gonna be coming back and spending time with us this summer. My son Nathan will be coming back and working with us a lot this summer, and Josh, of course, will be here, and my Uncle Roger will be coming back. He's not sure when, but it'll be a couple weeks yet before he's probably back down with us. So we're going to be moving into a new phase, and that, of course, is about production of the one kilowatt unit and getting that outside, getting it tested, getting the performance data that we need. So I don't think that um, there's really anything else I want to cover at this point other than to say we've been moving at light speed. We're doing really, really well with everything that we have going on here, and it's getting exciting because we're about to move into the phase where we will be doing production parts. Well, you know, working on the, the prototype parts, I should say, to get it out there, get it tested, lock it onto the forklift, as we said, take it out in the, the driveway out here, put it up in the air, get some data, see how it's performing, tweak it, work on it, and then start feeling better about the design and see where we want to you know, just lock in on the production of those parts. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for following us and sticking with us. See you on the next world.